everyone. My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Hi, thanks for having me, Vahid. It's nice to be here. Yeah, I am. Uh, my name is Lisa Kelly, and I am tuning in from Toronto, Canada. So, awesome. yes, awesome. Where, where it is very warm right now. <laughs> awesome. I mean, we're actually okay. We're warm, too. I'm in L.A., so it's pre- I mean, listen, at some point, I don't care anymore. I'm just going through my day, doing my stuff, taking care of things. Well, you it's, can't it's control the weather. Beautiful. You can't control the weather. So what are we going to do, right? That's it. It's beautiful. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. let's dive into it. Yeah. First, um, let's start with Thinking Go Rich. Yeah. When did you start with it? How did you start with it? Well, I... I've read Think and Grow Rich before, Napoleon Hill, um, great book. And then since then, I've read all kinds of his similar principles that, you know, match the law of attraction and whatnot and um, ask it is given. So I read so much on that topic, right? It's all about mindset as, as Napoleon Hill talks about, right? So, um, yeah, so I've... What's your I favorite think principle? I've been a master, I think I've been a master of this probably for about 15 years. Awesome. So what's your... What is... Your favorite success principle from Thinking Go Rich? I can only choose one. <laughs> well, give me your top two. <laughs> okay, my top two. So I, the, the first one for me has to be desire. So, and, and I relate desire because if you don't have a burning desire to do something in your life, then, you know, you're going to settle for that status quo, right? You're just going to keep going on as if life, you know, you don't know what's going on in life and you just keep going the way it is. But for me, I used to be an elementary school teacher. I was uh, a teacher for 20 years. Yeah. So, and in Canada, yeah. And in Canada, it's considered um, quite an affluent job. I know in the U.S. it's different. So in Canada, it's it's a very secure job. You know, you get benefits, you get your holiday time, you get your pension. So it's pretty, it's a pretty good gig, right? But when I look at desire, so two, I have left teaching. So two years before I left, I had this burning desire to do something different. And I knew, I knew I wasn't living my authentic self and I needed to do something different, but I didn't quite know what that was, right? But the burning desire for me was there and that's how it started for me. So that's a really important principle. Um, and another important principle for me is faith because you can have the burning desire, but you've got to have the faith to believe that that desire is going to manifest for you into form, right? So for me, desire and faith really, really come to mind. And those are those are very, very important. I mean, I do see that a lot of individuals initially, when they pick up the book, they confuse faith and religion together, and they're they're different. So we we've talked about that extensively in our channel, where yeah. they're two different things. They're, yes, you, your faith and religion is completely different. So um, true. Yeah, one hundred percent. How do I know what my burning desire is? How is it different than just wanting something? That's a good question. I was, I was, okay, so for me, how do I find out? I had to do a lot of soul searching. Everything you want is within yourself, everything. So when I, when you, when we talk about reading these books, right, when we read these books, it's, and I heard you talk about this today, actually, I heard you talk. It's not just you read it and okay, put it aside and that's all. It's a workbook, right? So, right, it's a workbook. And I have all of my, all of my books, I only read nonfiction, those types of books. So all of my Mm -hmm. books, I go back and I pick them up depending when I need them throughout my life, but it's a workbook. So for me, it's no different. When I was looking for that desire within my life, when I knew that I was meant to do something else, but I didn't know what, Um, And I knew I wanted to serve on a bigger scale. For me, it was a lot of soul searching. And that for me is meditation. I go within, I do a lot of meditation, and I do a lot of journaling and just asking. And the key is, and Napoleon Hill talks about this, and this is where some people fall down, right? Um, With the law of attraction. They ask, we have no problem wanting and asking, right? (laughs) But it's believing and having the faith and letting it go, to a bigger, you know, I call it my higher power, the universe, whatever name you want to call it. When you let it go and surrender is truly when you've given up everything and then the universe can work for you and then you'll get anything you want, really. How important is our actions behind that, though? Say that again? How important is our action behind that? Yeah, 
so because I feel like a lot of people watch the movie Secret oh, and yeah. the Law of Attraction, yeah. and then you can't be on the couch and attract things. I mean, you attract laziness, you attract good documentaries and good movies, but you ain't gonna attract freedom to your life. Why are you laughing? Because <laughs> it's, it's funny what you say. You attract laziness. We attract more Netflix shows. We attract right, yeah. No, you can't. And so, and I always preface this to people I'm working with or people I'm talking with. Don't confuse that with, with that means you get to sit on the couch and do nothing and just wait for it to, to arrive. It doesn't work like that. You still have to put in the work to get there, right? Whatever it is you're doing. So me as a mindset coach, that doesn't mean, oh, I can sit back and say, I'm going to have all these, you know, coaching clients and I'm going to be the speaker at this, but I can sit back and do nothing. No, my purpose is to serve the world on a bigger scale. Therefore, I have to do that. And the universe won't work for you until you're doing those things, too. They want to see you've got an investment behind this. Oh, you got to have some skin in the game. Yeah, Definitely. 100% skin in the game. But not to confuse, because there are a lot of construction people that do 10, 12 hours of hard work. That is also true, too, that just hard work by itself, I think is an ingredient. Here, here's what I understood because I'm workaholic and my yeah. wife could say that my wife, I mean, everybody that knows me, they know that do or die, Vahid gets things done and I do, but just working hard by self may not be the answer because no. a lot of other people do it. So you got to add the IQ, the EQ and the action hard work together. But right. I feel like a lot of people want it easily. That doesn't mean that it cannot come to you easily. It's just that you still got to do the amount of work that you got to do. But I want to make sure that if you make that distinction, a lot of people want it. They just, they work hard. Teachers work hard. But that doesn't mean we reward them with a million dollar salary. In U.S., no. nobody becomes a teacher because of the salary. And I don't right. think anybody should become a teacher for the salary. I think they no. should do it because they love it. But right. we're not rewarding them as much as they, there. There are a lot of gurus on YouTube teaching stuff that make more money on one day then teachers make the entire salary the entire year. So it, it's it's confusing, but I want everybody to know that working hard. Now, here's the crazy part. Tell me if I'm on the right path. What I lack in IQ, I make up for it with work ethic. Okay. Yeah. Can I comment on that? Uh, that's what I, like I'm trying to explain that to people, but I think you'll do a better job at it. I, I'm I'm having a hard time explaining that. Okay, so first of all, I want to say okay, so you have a great work ethic, and that's amazing. But let me ask you something, Vahid. When you are working and do like I've seen all your lives today, you have one after the other, right? Like you're going, you're working hard. Are you working hard, or are you doing something that you feel fulfilled? within yourself that you feel like you're serving a purpose and you're really enjoying doing it. See, the distinction for me is when you're really loving what you're doing, and I want to be careful what I say, because it does not mean that you're not working hard, but it means that you're, you're just doing it and you just love the work. So you know that saying, when you love what you do, you never work a day in your life or whatever that saying is. That's how I kind of equate what I do and I see what you do, I see your videos, and, and there's a passion behind them. You love to serve, you love getting entrepreneurs out there, and you and I, I think you tr it looks like you love what you do, right? And Am I, I think if the fulfillment is not there, you're gonna get tired or you're gonna get burned out. So well, the fulfillment is there. So how do we, because initially it wasn't like that for me though. There right. is a period of time that you just gotta do it, and then I feel like after a while you're like, yeah, I like this. This is cool. I could do this every day. And will you do it if nobody paid you for it? Ah, see, there's the, there's the big million dollar question. And my answer to this right now for me, yes. Because I feel like I'm living my soul's purpose. I feel like I'm doing what I'm meant to do. I was reading um, a book this morning. I don't know if you're familiar with Marianne Williamson. I've heard yeah, of her stuff, yeah, but I haven't yeah. Heard of she was actually running for your Democratic Party or whatever at one point. Anyways, she talks about in her book, The Gift of Change, she talks about this exact thing where when she started out, 
she wasn't, you know, the paid speaker that she is. She wasn't, you know, writing, you know, bestsellers. She just was, she, for the sheer joy, she loved living in her small little apartment with her daughter. She loved, um, you know, doing little things throughout the day, whatever I'm paraphrasing. But when I read that, it was a bit of an aha for me, right? Because she didn't have all these big wants and I want this and I want this and I need to have a big business. I need to have bestsellers. She wasn't thinking that. She truly was just serving from her heart and doing what she loved. And then she said in the book, everything just flowed to me so easily. Doesn't mean she wasn't working hard. So there's a, there's a and, distinction. And, and that's what I feel. Because, I mean, think about it for, for, for a, a mentor, a coach, or someone that's, you know, that's serving others in, in a way where it's, they're helping other people get ahead. Right. If you don't do marketing, you don't put yourself out there, you don't make videos, you don't do posts, you don't do, I mean, all of these things require work. Yeah. And here is, the, here is the other part that I see a lot of entrepreneurs don't talk about, yeah. is they do not talk about, which I'm gonna come to a question to you, is they don't talk about the things that they needed to do to fund their passion and what gives them their fulfillment. Because oh, yeah. a lot of entrepreneurs that I know today, what they do today was not funded but what, by what they do today. It was right. funded by them doing uh, other chores that they did. It could be that the guy is doing Uber right now, but he's yeah. funding his future passion. Or they yeah. do tutoring, they did this. Or they had a nine-to-five job, and yeah. then based on that, they got the money together to fund what they do. All of the startups, it could be $500, it could be $500,000. It doesn't matter. But that initial money C that took to start that was not from their passion because their passion was not profitable at that moment. I mean, nobody knew who they are. And nobody, right. th there was no business, right? It was, a, it was right. an investment slash expense for them to do that. Yeah. So my question yeah. out of that is, if you took your, your pension, your 401k, whatever you guys got in Canada, if yeah. I take all of it out and I strip you of all your income right now, yeah, no husband, no nobody to go borrow money from, all of that out. Yeah. How would that change what you do today? Well, <laughs> of course we need, I know, you're, I know where you're going with this because I've seen it on another video. So of course we need money to survive, okay? We, we do, we need money to survive. But I'm going to tell you on my journey. So I'm going to, when I was a teacher, it's almost a six-figure income teaching here in Canada. Okay. So it's a pretty, it's a pretty big income. Like I said, I left my teaching job to start my entrepreneurship, which wasn't in mindset coaching, what I do now. It was in a network marketing business. And I, I thought I'm leaving teaching. I gave it all up. My pension, my people thought, Fahid, I was crazy. Like, because you want to talk about construction workers and people that work all day and they just do it and, and they work hard, but they complain because they don't necessarily love what they do, but they complain about what they're doing. Okay. And they're too afraid, which is where your mindset comes in because they've got all these limiting beliefs that tell them they can't do anything else, but teach or whatever it is you're doing. And for me, I just took that giant leap of faith <laughs> and said, no, I'm going to do this. And my network marketing business was not where it should be to leave teaching, okay? But I just believed in myself enough and I had that desire to do that. So I didn't have anything. I had no money, zero, nothing to leave teaching and do this, but I did it. So does that answer your question a little bit? And I'm not suggesting... I want a lot of people to know that, you know, sometimes they look at it like you established and you have the luxury. I think it's yeah. a luxury that you have. Let's say you just went and got your, you know, certification on NLP, seven days. Yeah. Most people can take seven days, five days yeah. to go through that, let alone pay thousands of dollars for yeah. courses, continue education, all of these things. But I always want to make sure that we're being authentic. And I know a lot of, and, and, and eventually I'm going to write a book on this, is that there's a lot of dirtiness to it, how you become an entrepreneur and how you become successful in a good manner where you had done things that you may not want to be exposed, meaning yeah. that you didn't go to a restaurant. You, 
I mean, I tell you this. When I opened my own auto repair shop, and I was discussing this with my wife, and she yeah. goes, you know a lot of pickup lines, and you can, you can talk to a lot of people. And I told her, listen, when I used to go on a date, not that I didn't have the money, but the money was for the business. So I would go around, drive around for like an hour or two, because I was afraid that if she says, let's go for dinner, and I don't control the environment, yeah. we might end up spending $100, $200, $300. That two, $300 was for advertising for my business. Right. Not that I didn't have it. I just, yeah. the prioritization wasn't for a dinner. Prioritization right. was for business so right. we could make money. So yeah. we would drive for an hour or two and then we'd just drive home. And that was my date. That was our date, just in the car, me driving around, cruising, watching scenery, all of that. Yeah. So I was telling my wife, I said, but a lot of people think I'm just good in conversation. It was out of necessity that I became good because when you want to talk for two hours yeah. and you want to stay interesting for two hours, yeah. you better have your shit together. Yeah. Like you better have topics. You better, yeah. it's it got to be interesting for you to do that. So I think a lot of entrepreneurs don't talk about that. Right. You know but what? if you talk say, about it, you know what it was. Honesty, honesty about the journey and being authentic about where you were and where you're going and the journey along the way is so key. And there's, I have a YouTube channel and on, I think it was my last video, I talk about the financial setback I went through um, last year. And it was horrific, worst time of my whole life. Um, and of course, there was times in my head where I'm like, did I make a mistake? I shouldn't have quit teaching. That was crazy. But then I quickly come back to, no, I have to surrender and trust that everything is serving a purpose. And like you said, everything along your journey is building you up to where you're finally going to be. But I do agree with you that honesty about the journey is key. And I'm actually, it's funny you say that because I'm working with a business coach right now as well. And we're talking about showcasing, yeah, you gotta work with a business coach, but showcasing my journey on social media for people to see. I do think that's key, yeah. Yeah, because a lot of people, I feel like, you know, I was just talking to a gentleman this morning, we had an early morning, he's in London and I'm in, I'm in LA time zone difference we were talking like he's been an online game for over 10 years and 10 years of him right. being in an online game is equivalent to some people's like 20 30 years right and a lot of people right. i was telling one of my buddies that we we're having a meeting with this so and so he's like oh my god and he started comparing and i was all like you don't understand that this guy has paid the price for 10 15 years yeah you know being in that space you and I could not compare ourselves to his 10th yeah. year where we might be on our second, third, fourth, whatever year we're in. So for us to want to have that kind of an income and results is yeah. us manipulating ourselves and kind of bullshitting ourselves that it's okay to think like that. We have yeah. to think that we have not put in the work. So why should we expect that when we haven't worked for it or haven't had him as a coach or we, be, we haven't been in that space for long enough for us to say, yeah, you know, I've been in the five years. Why not to, you know, why not can I, can I request that of myself to perform right. at that level? Right. So I feel like a lot of people compare themselves to someone's 20th step when you're like in your second or third step. Yeah, you know what? I don't know if you know Kyle Cease, but he talks about being in first grade as opposed to fourth grade, right? And we, we all want to be in that fourth or fifth or twelfth grade. But and the worst thing, and I did another video on this, is the abuse of comparison. How can you possibly compare? And listen, we've all done it, right? I mean, I follow, and I've had to unfollow certain coaches on on uh, Instagram and not because I don't love them or get value out of them, but because I'm too busy comparing myself to their end goal. And that's just, that may, might be where I want to be. I'm not there yet and that's okay. So I think we have to give ourselves permission to say, it's okay that I'm just here. And if that means you got to unfollow people, then you have to unfollow people, right? Some sometimes that that's necessary, and yeah. sometimes it pissed me off that I wasn't there. So yeah, I don't know yeah. how you took it. To me, it was like you know, 
a big slap in the face because I was like, why didn't I think of that earlier? Why didn't I jump on that earlier? Why didn't I? Do? So for me, sometimes I was pissed off. I was like, you know what? This is not healthy. Like, I can't compare myself. The guy's got, you know, his team together and I'm just trying to bear. So that to me is like, it's good once in a while. It burns my butt. I got that competitiveness in me where I look at him. I'm like, okay, you mother, I'm, I'm coming after you. Like, I'm coming. I'm not there. Yeah. You know, I'm going to take, uh, you know, I'm going to zip it up right now, but I'm coming. Yeah. So I'm in competition with some people that they don't even know I'm in competition. With. And that's, that's good. Yeah. I don't healthy, think that's good. Healthy competition is good. But I'm going to say one more thing, Vicky, to you, just, just so I, because sometimes what happens is, um, and this happened to me, so I'm speaking from experience, right? And I also work with, an energy healer. <clears throat> and she helped me to realize this. She said, your success, okay, you're not going to be successful. And this goes for anybody until you clear your mind of limiting beliefs, of repressed emotion, of all those blocks you got going on in your head from the time you were born and before whatever, until you start clearing some of those layers you're gonna have a hard time moving forward. And, and I get that now. I get that. I, I totally understand that. And that's always been my goal. Yeah. Laura, yeah. This, listen, if you do good and you put out good content out there, listen, it's bound to happen. You yeah. know, when, when people, when people are not stupid, yeah, they, 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 they can, they can see it. They can feel it. They can pick up your energy. And, yeah. and if you're going to do good stuff, it's going to, I mean, when you go to a restaurant and you know that, you kind of know that this place is run by someone who cares or you go to a restaurant where you know they're just in there for the business and there's yeah. nothing wrong with that. Right? Yeah. Like my mom, her salon, right? She's like addicted to that place. Yeah. She's addicted to her craft. Yeah. You don't need to be a genius to go into my mom's salon and know that she's passionate about what she does. Right. right. Money is not her priority. Right. She's what can I put out there? What? Who can I help? This, that, and if and here's the crazy part. I haven't done this myself, where I could video it. But if you literally walk in, I want to get like a 25 year old girl that's gonna walk in, and is got the wrong color of hair, wrong haircut, wrong, wrong all that stuff. Yeah. And I want her to go to my mom and say, "Listen, my wedding is coming up, and I don't have any money. Uh, but I want to see what my mom would say." Yeah, because you know, I know what she said. like, just don't tell anybody. Just come. We'll take care of it. Paid when you can. Like, I'm, yeah. like I don't even have to do it, but I know that's what's gonna, what she's going to say, but I want to yeah. get it on tape. Yeah. Because that, to me, is like the foundation of you running a hair salon. 100%. And, and a lot of people wonder why my mom makes so much money where other people have the same license, same skill, same talent. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's heart center. It's mindset, but the mind and the heart are connected. And I oh, heard that. Sure. Yeah, the mind and the heart are connected. So when you have your heart's desire in whatever you're doing, then of course the mind, the heart's just leading the mind and everything just comes to you, right? Like you're, you're, anything you want just comes with you. Yeah, I need to I come see your mom to get my hair done because our hairdressers are so close. <laughs> yeah. If you if you're ever in LA, we got a full studio. We'll talk about. So, how do people find you? So, I have I have various ways, but on my Instagram page, which is Lisa underscore Kelly seventy one, I have a link tree there, and under that is my website. I have a YouTube channel, unapologetically you, where I put out some really good content. I think <laughs> uh, some mindset tips to help people through this time and whatnot. So, yeah, I have a very active page on Instagram. They can find me there. Love yeah. it. Listen, yeah. thank you so much for taking this time and being with us um, this this morning, this afternoon. Hopefully, we'll be able to do more because I feel like some of the topics we touched upon, you yeah. can't do in 30 minutes. Like, no, I would love need. to connect with you. And I'm going to start a podcast at some point, too, moving forward. So I'm going to connect with you on that, too. Definitely. Let's stay in contact. Stay safe. We'll talk soon. Awesome. Thanks, Sahin. Take care. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye.